So hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be learning about the astigmatic fan chart. So astigmatic fan chart has a line difference in 10 degree intervals. So that's the reason so this chart is going to measure precisely axis of correcting cylinder as compared to clock dial astigmatic chart where the difference between two number was 30 degrees. Some chart have corrected cylindrical axis uh, marked in the chart written at the top of each line spokes whereas some chart just only represent the actual representation of line orientation in degrees. We can easily find out whether the correcting cylindrical orientation is marked on the chart or is a line orientation in degrees. So for that you have to just see the 12 o'clock position. If 12 o'clock position is marked with a 0 degree it means the correcting cylindrical axis is marked here. So if it is marked with a 90 degree, it means it implies the orientation of the line. So as it is toward the 90 degree, so it is also saying 90 degree here. As we know in optometry, we have axis anti-clockwise written even in our trial frame also. But in case of astigmatic chart, it is written clockwise. The reason behind uh, these lines are written clockwise because it's a patient perspective, not the examiner perspective. If you are using this type of chart where the cylindrical axis orientation is not marked, but uh, the actual orientation in degree is given, you can easily find out correcting cylindrical axis by just deducting 90 degree or by adding 90 degree. If number is below 90, so you're gonna add 90 to it. If it is above 90, you're gonna subtract 90 out of it. Suppose here patient is seeing this line clearly, the value is 100, so you're gonna subtract 90 degree out of it and you're gonna place your correcting cylindrical axis towards the 10 degrees. Before we start with the actual procedure of astigmatic fan test, I want you to know about the optics behind these astigmatic chart. So link will be given in the description box or you can click i button also. So astigmatic fan test, it is a monocular procedure. So you have to occlude the left eye of the patient. Step one is similar to our clock dial astigmatic chart, where first step is to determine the best vision sphere and record the visual acuity. Remember to do fogging for your hypermetropic patient after recording the visual acuity. So in step two, you can estimate your astigmatism by seeing the patient visual acuity with best vision sphere. Suppose here patient is having a visual acuity with best vision sphere is 6 by 18. So it is estimated that patient is having uncorrected astigmatism of 2 diopter. So in step 2, you're gonna add a plus power which will be equal to the half of estimated astigmatism. So in our case, visual acuity with best vision sphere was 6 by 18 and the estimated cylindrical power was 2 diopters. So we're gonna do a half of uh, 2 diopter which will be 1 diopter. So we're gonna add that to the our best vision sphere. At this point the patient should have one set of line in the chart more clear compared to other. If patient is still not uh, able to see the one line clear compared to other, you add more plus in 0 0.25 steps until patient see one line clear compared to the other lines on the chart. So this is our step one where by using our best vision sphere, you are actually coinciding the circle of least confusion on the retina. That's why a sphere lens is going to give you maximum visual acuity which is offered by any spherical lens. This is step two where the patient was reading 6 by 18 and we have estimated from the table the uncorrected astigmatism is around 2 diopter. So half of that is 1 diopter. So we're gonna add that plus 1 to our best vision sphere which will be reducing our best vision power to minus one diaptrical spherical. By this what we are actually doing as here interval was two diaptrical cylinder. So as soon as you place plus one here what it is going to do it is going to move circle of least confusion in front of retina and it is going to bring behind focal point on the retina. That's the reason patient is going to say one line is clear compared to the other line on the chart. There's an alternative way where you will be using plus power until all the line on the chart becomes blur and after that you're gonna decrease the plus power until one of the line on the chart becomes clear compared to the other line on the chart. In this uh, example where we have used plus 2 adaptical sphere, what this fogging lens will do, it will bring the whole interval of strum in front of retina and after that we slowly start uh, reducing this plus power until one of the foci coincide with the retina and that's why patient is going to see one of the line 
clear compared to the other lines on the chart. Both of these method is going to give us same result. Here also minus 1 and here also minus 1. Step 3 is patient is question which set of line is more clear and read the correcting cylindrical axis from the chart. If you have this type of chart and patient say this line is clear compared to the other line on the chart. So you can directly read the correcting cylindrical axis from the chart which it is saying 170 degrees. If you are using this type of chart where actually the line orientation is mentioned on the chart. In this case suppose patient is preferring this line AT. So you have to add 90 degree to that and that's how you are gonna get your cylindrical axis orientation. So both of these chart is going to give you same result. Then step 4 is the examiner then start adding a minor cylindrical lens and simultaneously keep questioning about equal clarity of lines. The examiner continues adding a minor cylindrical lens until the patient report all the lines are equally clear. At this step you will be adding minus 0.25 diaptical cylinder. What this minus cylinder will do it will actually move the foci which was in front of retina was the retina. And you're gonna slowly increase it until patients say all the line on the chart is equally clear for me. Step 5 is examiner add an extra 0.25 diaptical cylinder to see the reversal. And this step as the patient was saying 170 line was clear for them. Now you're gonna see a reversal here by adding 0.25 diaptical cylinder. Patient is going to note 90 degree apart to 170 you're gonna see lines are clear compared to the other lines on the chart. If this happens, it means you have correctly arrived at your final subjective refraction. So step 6 is you gonna remove that extra 0.25 which you have added in step 5 and note down the final power. And step 7 is you gonna repeat the same procedure for the other eye. So astigmatic fan and block a chart is similar to astigmatic fan chart. Only difference is extra one arrow and two blocks are given. Procedure will be similar so if patient is preferring 90 degree. So you're gonna rotate this arrow towards the 90 degree. And after this patient is asked to see the clarity of these two lines. So at this point patient will be seeing lines which are oriented towards the 90 degree more clear to the line which are oriented towards the 180 degree. So this chart give a advantage because uh, every time you place a lens and keep on asking patient about the clarity of the all the lines. So patient sometimes get confused. That's why to overcome that confusion, the two box are given where patient has to focus on these two box only and examiner will be questioning about the clarity of these box. If uh, both of these box are having the same clarity means you have correctly arrived at your final point. Thank you everyone. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please like and subscribe.